Well, welcome back to Morning at NTV. Child early enforced marriage is a harmful practice that disproportionately affects young women and girls. Globally, we are getting information that 650 million women who are alive today have either been married as children. Yes, that information is verified. And this year alone of 2020, we do anticipate that 12 million young girls all over the world, that is 7.6 billion people all over the world, actually that number will be subjected to forced or early marriages this year of 2020. Now to talk about this and more, I'm joined by uh, Mr. Kamadi Vionari. He is the Director of Research, Education and Documentation at the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Many thanks for joining us on Morning at NTV. It's a pleasure. Good morning to you and to our viewers. Let's start with a simple question. What is child early and forced marriage? Um, child marriage is that marriage which occurs before the age of 18. Mm. According to our constitution, uh, Article 31, uh, the, the, the men and the women are supposed to start a family mm -hmm. as long as they are age of 18 years and above. So the moment somebody gets into a marriage union below the age of 18, that is regarded as child marriage or sometimes it is called early marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And forced marriage? Forced marriage, um, the fact that children below the age of 18 years do not make decisions on their own, mm. the moment they, they involve in acts of marriage, we consider it to be forced marriage mm. because there is no free, meaningful uh, uh, consent. And the, actually, in most cases, they are just coerced because they don't know what they are going into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we call it early child and forced marriage, mm -hmm. yeah. So that means uh, mm, child marriage could in, uh, could in turn be a form of forced marriage in a way? In a way. Yes, yes. Mm. And when you look at it critically, the biggest percentage of it is actually forced. Even if it is not forced it, uh, directly, it is, it is somehow induced by, you the know, communities. Uh, by the communities, by the parents, by relatives, you know, uh, so uh, uh, the fact that children get into marriage before the age of 18, mm -hmm. the, 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 there is no informed consent really, and in most cases they are just coerced mm -hmm. because the parents, some parents want a, a dowry, you know, uh, uh, and they end up uh, mm -hmm. forcing these children into early marriage. Mm. Yeah. Of, of course, as the Directorate of Research, Education and Documentation, you've been carrying out various uh, surveys and findings. According to what we are uh, getting, as far as this information is concerned, there's been a skyrocketing number of child marriages within Uganda during the lockdown. Could you help us understand what reasons were behind this? Um, even before the lockdown, mm. we had actually found out that this is a, a big problem in, in Uganda. But I think during the lockdown, the, it was just escalated. And there is a difference between child pregnancy and the child marriage. Now, what happened during the lockdown, it was largely child pregnancy, not necessarily child marriage mm. uh, from uh, what we find out. Mm. But when you look at it, at the end of the day, it comes to the same thing. Because even if, even if a girl is pregnant and at her parents' place, mm -hmm. Uh, and she's not yet of age, mm. or she has gone to get married, uh, and she's not yet of age, the effects are more or less the same. Mm. And uh, we found that this practice is, m uh, it, it is across the whole country, but there are some hot spots, mm. like Omoro District, we've been there, uh, Yumbe, Zombo, Tororo, you know, and the other places in mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, we are also getting information from some development partners who are actually attributing this to poverty. Poor, poor households have uh, seen so many of their young children being married off. We heard of an instance of a, a family that sold off their daughter for only 50,000 Uganda shillings. 50,000 into marriage. And we're also getting information that 33,000 young girls in Uganda could be forced into marriages. Yeah, uh, one of the major causes from our findings is actually poverty. But um, I would like to urge parents mm. uh, not 
uh, not to sell off their children, not to make their children get married at under age mm. as a, a solution to their economic problems. Um, the, uh, 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 there has been a saying that uh, poverty uh, sometimes is, for instance, a cause of corruption. But I, I argue that uh, uh, it's about individual behavior because there are so many avenues of how to address challenges of poverty. How do you get out of poverty? There are so many government programs, uh, initiatives, uh, urging people what to do to earn a living. So it is uh, very, very unfortunate to turn to your own children as a means of income. Mm -hmm. Therefore, yes, poverty is there, but the parents, the, the guardians should uh, focus mm -hmm. on income generating projects as opposed to getting this little money and then condemning the future lives of their children mm -hmm. into what they can't even know will happen to them. All right, Mr. Bionabe. Now, besides poverty, what are some of the other major factors behind the pre high prevalence of child and forced marriages? We find out that uh, there are cultural practices. Right. There are some cultural practices and cultures that think uh, once a, a girl uh, develops breasts, is now ready to get married, uh, which is not true. Because there is a significant difference between the the size of a lady and the, uh, her real age. Some girls as young as 9, 10, you look at them and they, physically they appear as if they are old women, but they are still psychologically young, biologically young. Mm -hmm. They cannot uh, hold the pregnancy and that kind of thing. So the underlying point here is any culture custom which is inconsistent with our constitution mm. is null and void. So we, we have a problem of some cultural leaders, mm. traditional leaders, uh, who woo these girls into getting married at an early time stage. But the other aspect, there are some also religious groups who believe uh, that children should be given away when they are still young. Mm. That is also another cause. Then we have peer pressure. We have peer pressure within the communities. Uh, those who, uh, uh, who think that as girls are meant for being married off, we still have that very big challenge. It's actually a perception issue that um, as long as the, 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 the girl children, for them, they were destined to get married and, do, uh, and don't do any other thing. That's why you see uh, most families prefer taking chi uh, the boy uh, child to school at the expense of the girls. Mm. So uh, that perception issue within our communities is mm. partly responsible for what we see. Mm. Then th there is this aspect of school dropouts. Children who drop out of school and especially girls, they find themselves having nothing to do at home and the next thing they think of is getting married at whatever age. Yeah, those are some of the causes mm. that are triggering early child marriages. What about a lack of information? We are also getting reports that lack of information has been attributed as one of the major factors leading to forced or early marriages. Young people not knowing any better. You are absolutely right. Because this even applies to religious, religious leaders and traditional leaders mm. uh, who preside over these marriages. They have no information. Actually, some, uh, what we may take as simple as looking at the physical make makeup of a lady, uh, of a girl, some people think that is, maybe that girl is as old as uh, 20. So they don't take care to look at the birth certificate or to find out when was this girl actually born. Mm. So you are uh, certainly right. Lack of information is a major aspect. But also an appreciation of the fact that this is a major vice within our communities. This is why we are urging all local leaders, cultural leaders, religious leaders, you know, these people who are now uh, uh, in the electoral period, we would like to see manifestos addressing this uh, issue. It's a very big problem and it's going to affect the next generation. Because you can't imagine a child of 11 uh, producing another child. Mm. 
a child producing a child, a child getting married to a child, mm -hmm. what kind of future are we likely to get? Mm -hmm. First of all, the they, 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 they are not yet ready. Their bodies are not yet ready to produce children. So sometimes it is a cause of maternal mortality. Uh, they, 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 uh, some of the girls don't even know who the fathers of these children are. So I, I, you, you just realize that we are going to remain in that problem as a country. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, I'm having a conversation with Mr. Kamadi Vionari. He is the Director of Research, Education and Documentation at the Uganda Human Rights Commission. It's a very contentious discussion on child early, on early child and uh, forced marriages in that regard. Well, we're also getting information that 40% uh, of uh, young girls in the uh, develop, uh, developing countries, yes, are being married off before the age of 18. Now, 12% of those young people are being married off before the age of 15. But in Uganda here, Mr. Yonari, would like to know, what are the numbers? Who are the most affected victims? The girls. The girls. Some studies conducted uh, some few years back it was clear girls were more affected than the boys. Yeah. Uh, the girls were more affected than the boys. Mm. Uh, for, for reasons uh, I have just explained, mm. the thinking that ch girls should not go to school, priority is given to, to boys. The patriarchal nature of our, of our society mm. extends to uh, girls being more affected. And who are the perpetrators? The perpetrators are, I, I can say, all sorts of men within society, really. Uh, it is uh, very funny to find that teachers, some teachers are perpetrators, border border riders are perpetrators, uh, e, e parents. parents themselves, you know. Yeah, so uh, some religious leaders procure this. There are for almost every category within our society. It is a cross-cutting issue that calls for concerted efforts from uh, everybody mm. within our communities. Mr. Bionari, the viewer would like to know the prevalence of uh, child early and forced marriages in Uganda. Sorry? The statistics. What is the prevalence of uh, child early and forced marriages in Uganda? Um, well, it is... How prevalent is it in Uganda? Child it, marriage. It is, it, it, uh, 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 I should say it is all over the country. It would be misleading to say that it is only in this place. Mm. But the places I earlier on mentioned are just, uh, um, it's where it is most prevalent. Uh, 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 we have been, like I said, to oh, Tororo, mm. uh, Omoro, uh, Koboko, Yumbe, Zombo, Namayingo, those are the most affected places. But during the lockdown, we saw that uh, in Luka, in Kagadi, in Hoima, all these places are now uh, facing this challenge. Let's now talk about the human rights implications of uh, these child marriages. What are some of them? Well, uh, right to education, mm -hmm. most important, because the, the moment these g girls get married, they stop uh, uh, with their, uh, they stop from there. Yes. They don't continue with the education. Mm -hmm. Majority of them are P4, P5, P6 dropouts, mm -hmm. and this has a negative implication on the right to education. Mm -hmm. But also right to life. Mm -hmm. Some of them have died uh, while giving uh, birth because uh, their bodies are not yet ready to, 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 to hold the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it comes with all sorts of complications. Even lack of transport as a result of the lockdown e at some e point. E exactly. Mm. So, uh, but also talk about the entire spectrum of maternal reproductive health. Mm. The right to health uh, is also affected for these uh, younger girls. Mm. Um, you, 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 it also affects their uh, uh, economic rights. Mm -hmm. they, can, they, they are not empowered. They can't fend for themselves. Uh, you, 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 you find that all those rights are affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, the interventions that you've undertaken as the Human Rights Commission to ensure that we do away with child marriages in Uganda. Our major intervention is sensitization and awareness creation. We believe this is uh, a voice that can be tackled through 
community awareness, parents most especially. And it is important to do prevention. Like the old adage goes, prevention is better than cure. It is very, very important for us to know, put in place mechanisms. Parents should uh, avoid child neglect, child negligence. Because uh, it is puzzling that uh, when children were at school uh, before the lockdown, they were no, the issues of child pregnancy were, were not as rampant as we are seeing them now. Mm. The question is, what is the role of the parents? We should take this one very, very seriously. Because so help, help us break it down. What is the role of the parents in this case? They are listening and watching. The parents should, uh, take, uh, should take deliberate efforts to look after their children. Mm. It's no longer business as usual that you send children to go to, to, to the well to collect water at 7 p.m. Mm. And for the next one hour, you are not aware uh, where they are and they have not come back. That is very, very critical. You know, uh, parents should talk to their children, tell them the dangers. Because like you earlier on said, information mm. is power. Yes. Talk to children and tell them the dangers associated with these harmful practices so that they have a conscious mind so that they are able to tell off these border border riders they meet on their way mm -hmm. they are able to tell off anybody who wants to interfere with their bodies mm -hmm. it's very very important parents have a very very big role to play and it doesn't matter whether you're in an urban setting or a village setting the vice is surrounding us all over mm -hmm. yeah so uh, prevention is very, very important. But in a case where one is being uh, affected, let us enforce the law, involve the police, because there is also a challenge of parents covering up. Actually, others procure it in, in exchange of what you earlier on said, money. Mm. That is also wrong. Parents should know that there are so many other avenues of getting money uh, instead of selling off their children. Because these children come from a given home. They come from a given home within our societies. Mm. So the parents, guardians, religious leaders, mm. cultural leaders uh, should uh, focus on this mm. because we need a generation that will help the country. Ms. Abionabi, we are also getting information that some parents collude with the criminals or the perpetrators. They ask for money from the perpetrators to set them free after, you know, violating their children. How bad is this situation? And do you think it has exacerbated the issue of child marriages in Uganda? It is actually something that we have also found out. Mm. It is happening in some places. Again, that th th those are the kind of parents we mm. are urging to desist from such a practices. But the, the police, for instance, uh, should also heighten uh, their interventions in this regard mm. so that this practice is uh, completely wiped out. Mm. Yeah, because it is a very, very serious matter uh, where you have children who produce children and then they, 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 they can't provide for any basic uh, uh, necessity of the, of the children that they are producing. Mm. So it just keeps us backward as a society they have not acquired education. They are not economically empowered. They are just vulnerable groups of people mm. producing another vulnerable category of, mm. of, of children. All right. Yeah. Now, which stakeholders should be involved in the prevention and protection of uh, protection efforts towards curbing or uh, warding off the uh, child marriages issue? The stakeholders mm. here are the parents to start with. Themselves. Themselves. Right. But also the cultural leaders, we have cultural institutions which, who are listened, uh, cultural leaders are listened to v very well in most of our societies. Buganda Kingdom, Bunyoro Kingdom, Busoga, uh, wherever you, you, you go. Mm. These traditional leaders, they should uh, uh, embark on a very big drive of ensuring that this vice is talked about everywhere. Mm -hmm. The other critical stakeholder are religious leaders. Religious leaders, their role is to mold society into being perfect human beings. Therefore, they should make it part of their deliberate effort. Mm. Every, every Friday in mosques, every Sunday, Saturday in churches, let this be talked about. 
it is actually a danger that is eating up our society silently. Mm -hmm. So we need to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. But also you, the media, I'm, I'm happy it's what you are doing here right Indeed. now. Yes, yeah. since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. But you should just strengthen your efforts. Indeed. The media, you are also a critical stakeholder. Mm -hmm. And the government? Of course, uh, government uh, all, uh, takes the lead. The government takes the lead. I know the Minister of Gender, Labor mm. and Social Development is at the forefront on this. So in this case, what should be the ideal role of government in curbing uh, child alley and forced marriages? Well, the uh, first of all is awareness creation. All right. Yeah, which we are doing. Mm. You know, you know uh, the, the, the state is you and me. Indeed. Uh, 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 government has put in, government should put in place enabling laws. The laws are in place, by the way. The Children's Amendment Act uh, was recently enacted in order to strengthen more the protection of children. Mm. Then corruption. Government should look into issues of corruption. Because where parents connive with the perpetrators, where uh, the police is compromised, and then uh, files are closed, mm. you know, where you know there is a marriage about to be procured, and then you just... Uh, uh, don't talk about it. The uh, government should also come in strongly in that in that regard. Mm. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at the overall recommendations coming in from the Uganda Human Rights Commission. You have a little bit like three minutes and we wrap up. Recommendations from the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Um, mm. Implementation of the existing laws. Okay. All stakeholders, especially law enforcement agencies, it's very very important to uh, uh, Im uh, implement the existing laws. Uh, to the letter without any compromise. Now, parents, I'm repeating this, parents should, do, um, should take this as a serious issue, talk to their children, monitor their children's movements, and be able to guide children. Uh, the, 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 the other stakeholders I earlier on talked about, religious leaders, uh, cultural leaders, the media, they should all take this as a serious challenge in our communities mm. and talk about it. The politicians, mm. uh, we are going into uh, general elections. I would like uh, to urge our politicians, the political leaders, mm. to focus on this as a very big problem within our communities. And those engaged in FGM, please send a message to them. Because we also get information here at NTV, before a child is married off, they have to undergo the cutting. FGM for them to be fully women. So FGM, send a message to these people who are practicing it. FGM, uh, the law is in place. It was put in place. 2010. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, we continue to do deliberate efforts even as Uganda Human Rights Commission wherever it is being practiced. So any custom that is inconsistent with the constitution like I earlier on said is null and void. That is also violence against mm -hmm. children. All right. Yeah, it should also be condemned, and uh, the people we are urging to generally um, respect and observe the rights of children, they also have what it takes to also talk about FGM. Very insightful yeah. conversation yeah. with mm -hmm. Mr. Kamadi Vionarie. He is the Director of Research, Education and Documentation of the Uganda Human Rights Commission. And we continue to say right here at NMG, may the soul of Mr. Medi Kagwa, the President of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, continue to rest in eternal peace. It did leave a void at the tribunal. Not so, Mr. Vionarie. That's very mm. true. Uh, the tribunal is currently uh, not operational. Mm. No? Because there is no president at the time. Uh, there is the chairperson is mm. called the chairperson. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Mm. Yonavi, for yeah. making the time to speak to us. It's a pleasure. Yes. We are mm. going to take a very short break, but we shall return with another conversation on uh, the issue of um, access to information with Mr. Gilbert uh, Sendigua, the executive director of the Africa Freedom Information Center. We'll